situations, God. God, we just ask, God, that you just move in their finances, God. Father, God, any God that needs a lawyer, God, we ask, God, that you just be that lawyer in their situation, God. Father, God, we know that you can just touch any need that is in the house this morning, God. Father, God, we just thank you, God, for being the great provider that you are, God. Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, God. Father, God, we just ask, God, right now that you just do it, God. Whatever that whatever situation that is in the house this morning, God, that you just touch each and every situation, God. Father God, we just thank you in advance, God, for the things that you are going to do, God. Father God, because we know that you are going to do it, God. Father God, we just ask, God, that you just continue to provide in the in the needs that we know that we need, God. Now, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the house this morning, God, Father Lord. Father God, now, God, as we come to you, God, we just thank you in advance for the things that are going to go forth in this service this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, and we love you, God. Father God, Father God, we just are so excited about the things that you're going to do in this house, not only in this house this morning, but in each and every house that is standing open in your name this morning, God. Father God, we're excited for the things that you are going to do, God. Father God, now, God, as we come to you, God, we just ask, God, we just thank you, Lord. Father God, for the things that you're going to do, God. Now, God, we ask, God, that you just touch the youth of this community, God. Father God, for there is so much going on, God, so we lift up the youth of this community, God. We just ask, God, that you just touch their minds, God. Father God, because there are so many things that are going rampant, God, that are, that are just encouraging them to do all of these different things, God. So we just ask that you just touch their minds, God. Father God, we just ask that you touch our nation, God. Father God, because there's so much hatred going on, God, that we just ask for peace, God. We ask that you just 
provide the unity that we know that you can provide, God. Father God, we just ask, God, that you just bring a closeness in this world, God, in this nation, God, that we know that you can do, God. And we thank you in advance for the unity that you're going to bring in, in this nation, God. Now, Father God, we thank you, Lord, and we just thank you for what's going to go forth in our service today, God. We thank you for the, the, for the praise team God, that is going to go forth and bring Zion songs, God. We thank you for the word that is going to go forth, God. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. How many victorious people do we have in the house on this morning? Hallelujah. How many came to glorify a true and living Savior on today? Hallelujah. How many of you just want him to be glorified in this place on today? How many of you came to just glorify the Lord on today? Hallelujah. 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 I just came to glorify the Lord on today. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know that he's worthy to be glorified? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's worthy, 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 he's worthy to be magnified, to be glow magnified the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together amen I came for no other reason but to glorify and to magnify the name of the Lord because he is the king of kings he is the Lord of Lords amen this song just says who is the king of glory the Lord God Almighty, amen. How many of you know that we serve a mighty God, amen? So, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you have on the altar this morning, just magnify the Lord with me because if we make Him bigger than whatever it is, amen. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet and let's magnify God on this morning.
your issue is. Yeah, You've already got the victory yeah, because we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to know that the victory belongs to him. Amen. So I can get excited that I serve a yes, mighty God. God because it doesn't yes, matter what God. else is going on because I know who the, the victory belongs to. Amen. Hallelujah. Because just like David said, I've been young and now I'm older. <laughs> but I've yeah, never God. seen the righteous forsaken. Yeah, God. So because of that, because I know who the victory belongs to. Amen. Hey, God. I'm just excited. Anybody else excited this morning? I don't even know what it is, but my spirit is just excited this morning. I don't know what God is going to do, but I'm just excited. Hallelujah. I'm just excited. I don't know what God is doing, but I'm just excited because I know who the victory belongs to. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that I know who the victory belongs to because I know it belongs to him. I'm just excited about what God is doing in the atmosphere because I can feel it. I'm just excited about what God is doing. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against the king? No one can, no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Make the river It all belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one. Yeah. 
victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him. believe the victory belongs to him, go ahead and worship him in this atmosphere. say welcome to those who are in the building and those who are online. At this time, we're going to take a few minutes just to go and love on somebody and let them know you love them on today. anything we want to recognize you amen thank y'all for choosing abundant love on today abundant love let's show our member, our visitors how we acknowledge them you remain standing we'll have one of our ushers bring you a love token all right so at this time if you have served in our uh, in fighting for our country can you could you please stand
We first, as your church, want to say thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice in fighting for our country. There are refreshments at the back. So y'all, after church, go ahead and stop by and see a veteran and tell them thank you. You may be seated. At this time, turn your attention to the monitors for our weekly announcements. Good morning, Good. Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, November 10th, and these are your weekly announcements. Lit Living in Truth Young Adult Ministry is held every second Saturday of each month from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. in classroom number three. Please see Sister Ayanna Minor for details. Abundant Love Fellowship's One Accord Marriage Ministry is held every third Saturday at 11 a.m. in classroom number three. Pearl's Women Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in the youth room. Man Up Men's Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in classroom number two. New Members Orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and everyone is invited to attend. Please contact Minister Yolanda Minor for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. For additional information, please contact Minister Evelyn Jordan. Wednesday night life sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live, so join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible Study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can also visit our website at www.alfwaco.com for an update on future events. You can sell your tithes and offerings via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button, or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 15047, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via Cash App to ALF Offering, or via QR code. Abundant Love Let's all welcome our newest member partner, Sister Barbara Rice. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. So at this time, it's sewing time. So you uh, need an envelope, please raise your hand, and our ushers will get that for you. If you could place your seat in your right hand as we say a word of prayer. Father God, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to give back into your kingdom, God. Bless those who had it, who had the desire to give, but had it not. Allow this seed to fall onto further ground. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
the victory this morning oh that was weak how many y'all really got the victory this morning oh it's still weak okay 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 everybody that got the victory find somebody who don't and tell them victory is yours today they might not they might not look like they want to hear it they may not look like they want to receive it, but declare and prophesy over their life that the victory belongs to them today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Listen, listen, I, wanna, I want to do something real quick, real quick. I want everyone that served in the military, amen, to come up front. We, everybody that served, 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 everybody that served. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Everybody that served, everybody that served. We got everybody. We still, still got some people coming. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, now, let me tell you who really makes this country great. These are the people. These are the people that secured your freedom as a, as, a, as a nation. These are the people that put their lives on the line so that we could be free. These are the people that really make America great. Now, now listen, listen, listen. I want them, I need a, I need a mic, I need a mic, I need a mic, I need a mic, I need a mic. Um, I want them to tell you what branch of service that they served in. Amen. Now, listen. Now listen, I, I know that there are some preferences among them. <laughs> amen. But we're going we're gonna to allow them to just let you know. Amen. This, first of all, uh, as, they're, as they're getting ready to tell you, um, is anybody uh, here that's like, I didn't know. I didn't know that brother so-and-so was in the service. I didn't know that sister so-and-so was in the service. Anybody? Oh, 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 oh Really? Y'all knew all that, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Cal. That's my brother right there. Thank y'all. Thank you, thank you, Brother Cal. All right, all right. All right. I'm a retired first sergeant Cole, served 24 years in the Army. Yeah. Enjoyed every, every day of my life serving you all. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, good, good morning, Eric Bradford, retired Sergeant Major of Marines. Amen. Amen. <laughs> good morning, Mary Bradford, Major of Marines. Amen. Good morning, Bobby Rice, retired First Sergeant, 
Airborne Infantry. Hey, Amen. Hey, what you say? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sergeant Henry, Corporal, so glad I served. So glad I was a part of it. Taught me so much. Amen. Amen. Sergeant First Class, Joseph Henry. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Staff Sergeant Cooper, uh, United States Army, uh, Operation Desert Storm, and two peacekeeping missions. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody join me and say, coo, 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 coo. All right, all right. <laughs> My name is um, Angela. Well, I served in the Navy. I was a, a hospital corpsman, HM2 Singletary. Amen. Amen. And of course, the beautiful Paula Smith. Oh, wow. United States Navy. Go, Navy. Amen. Hey, hey, Come hey, on, hey. y'all. Give God a great praise for these great men and women. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We have some gifts for you guys, as Minister Quecha said. On, on that back table, so please don't leave today without getting your gift. Amen. Come on again. One more time. Come on. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Come on. Over my life. I can see how your love is guiding me. Come on. Even though I'm the wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me, and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Is it because of your mercy that we are not consumed? Because thy compassion stands on our day, a new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faith. Come on, everybody! Say it. I bet y'all won't say it again. Over my life, I can see how your love is guiding me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me. You kept on blessing This I recall to my mind Therefore I have hope It's because of your mercy That we are not consumed Because thy compassion Fail not They are new every morning Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Come on
you've done for us how you loosed our shackles how you set us free in the times that we didn't have nothing you were our provider in the times when we were sick you were our healer in the times where we were bound, you were our deliverer. And God, we thank you for all that you have done. If it had not been for the Lord that was on our side. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise, Father God, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak to our grateful hearts today Father speak to our grateful mind and the spirit that lodges in us God we command our soul to give you praise you've been that good to us God now Lord I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, my Lord, my strength, my redeemer. And I'll give you praise in advance for what you're going to do through this word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody lift your voice and give God a great praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may, you may be seated. I got a couple of things I need to, I need to, I need to say to you before. You've been. Glory be to God. Um, last week, um, we told everyone that was here um, that we are getting close. Closer than close to beginning construction on the brand new edifice that will be called the Abundant Love Fellowship Church. I wish I had about 15 of y'all that was expecting this to happen 
to just go ahead and give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. And we told you on last week that, and we thank God for one of the generals in the kingdom, amen, in the army of the Lord, and that is Pastor Lord Zidler. And he shared an idea with us about about having the member partners of Abundant Love Fellowship Church to write down their favorite scripture and what we're going to do, their name and their favorite scripture, and what we're going to do is that when they get ready to pour the foundation, the word is going before the cement. Glory be to God. And so we have, we have, we have some cards, and I want to thank, amen, uh, I believe it was Brother Devon Parks who put this together. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and listen, these, these cards, these cards, amen, uh, I need you to see um, um, uh, Reverend and Minister Parks, if y'all will stand real quick so everybody know who you are. Amen. We need y'all to see them right after service to get your card. All right. Now. Now, what we're going to ask you to do is put your name. It says ALFC member partner. Put your name there. And then a scripture declaration. Glory be to God. How many of you know we are declaring? Scripture declaration. And put the scripture there. Now, if you are so inclined, you can write the scripture out on the back of the card. Amen? But we are going to place those before the cement forms into the foundation, we're going to put the word of God there. Amen. And, and, and how, how many of y'all will, how many of y'all will participate? Glory be to God. Thank you, people of God. Amen. 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 So, so those are ready. Those are ready. Now, now we will be doing this all the way up to, amen, the time for us to go out and lay those out before the foundation. Amen. But, but how many y'all, how many y'all like to get in on the ground floor? I don't know about y'all, but I, I like to get in on the ground floor. Amen. I don't, I don't like to come, come in after everybody. No, I like to get in right at the first. Amen. So listen, you have the opportunity today to get right in right now. Amen. Amen. So we want you to keep that in mind. Amen. Um, uh, glory be to God. Um, also, also just want to let you know that, um, that as we progress toward this, amen, where is uh, Minister Adrian Halliburton? Where is she at? Oh, she had to step out. Okay, okay. Um, but Minister Adrian Halliburton uh, and, and the homecoming crew, where, I'm, I'm sorry, the groundbreaking crew, I, amen, where, where, where's the groundbreaking people that's helping with the groundbreaking? Amen, 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 amen. Some of them, oh, they must be all scattered all over the place. Okay, okay. So our, 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 our groundbreaking uh, is already ready to go. Amen. Our, our program, everything is ready to go. All we're waiting on is the uh, contractors, uh, which uh, we are having a meeting with them. And I want to I want to say this to all the board members that um, I got word that uh, they would like to present us with the the total project on Thursday at 10 a.m. at the Built Right Construction uh, Company uh, headquarters, which is off of Loop 340. So if you if you um, if you would like to get directions, I can tell you, but for board members, that's where we're going to be Thursday morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God. God is just doing some great things. Amen. Now, one of the things that we want to do in our groundbreaking is we want to honor, and I do mean honor, the people that started with us in 2015 but are not with us in 2024. Amen. Now, their presence is still here. Oh, I wish I had some people in here to know that their presence is still here. 
And we just want to honor them. Amen. Because I know they put in a lot of prayer. They, they sowed into that vision. They put a lot of prayer into that vision. Amen. And we are wanting to honor them and their families. Amen. In the groundbreaking. Amen. Um, so, so be, um, be thinking about that. Now, now, we also have a fundraiser. Now, many of you have, have came in and you saw the wheelbarrow. And, and you were wondering, uh, what the what? Um, how many of y'all had that thought? You saw the wheelbarrow and you was like, what, 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 what? Ooh, y'all, you know, Lord, please don't. No, don't do it, God. Don't do it. Don't do it. But the wheelbarrow is, um, is like for your loose change and anything that you want to contribute to the building fund. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, listen, uh, I thank God for you, every tither, every giver, we thank God for you. But if you're so inclined to give a little extra, glory be to God, we have the wheelbarrow to collect it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, somebody said, well, well, Pastor, what's the goal? What's the goal? What's the goal? Okay. The goal is $1.8 million. Now, somebody said, wait, 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 Pastor. I ain't got that much change in my couch. Hold up, okay? But listen, how many of you know it take 100 pennies to make a dollar, right? And so every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. And I can guarantee you as a church and as your pastor, we are grateful for every little bit that you bring. Amen? Praise God. So, so that's what the wheelbarrow is for, please. And it's going to be there. It's going to be there. Amen. Amen. So please, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, please bring your change and, and, and everything that God is leading you to, uh, to give uh, for that. Please bring that. Um, you know, ask some people on your job. I mean, you know, hey, um, hey, our church is, is, is building an edifice. Would you like to contribute? Amen. Bring that and put it in the wheelbarrow. Amen. Amen. We're also going to have some more QR cards for you. Amen. So that while you are out and about in the community, uh, you can have direct ask access to giving uh, that way as well. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. I'm done with the commercials. I'm done with the commercials. How many of y'all ready for the word of God? Amen. Please turn with me to Psalms chapter, oh, I'm sorry, the 20th number of Psalm, Psalms 20. If you're able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand in honor of the word of God. How many of you know that God is in his word? Amen. If you're able to stand, if you have the physical ability to stand, and even, and even if you can't stand long, just stand temporarily. I, I promise I won't be long. I promise I won't be long. Psalms 20, starting with verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Oops, I thought somebody would rejoice on that alone. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Oh, my God. And people say, we don't need the church. Send thee help. From the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burn sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thy own heart. Oh, God, I thank God for that one. Listen, listen, when God grants you out of his heart, you have to understand how big his heart is. He said, grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now I know 
that the Lord saveth his anointed. Ooh, I thought I was going to hear a roar from the anointed. Glory be to God. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I need every believer to look at another believer and say they not like us. Uh, look at your other neighbor and say they not like us. They don't know the God we know. They don't know the power we know. They don't know. They not like. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. They not. Somebody say, well, pastor, that's not proper gra grammar. It ain't the grammar, it's the message. They not like us. I would preface this message by telling you that trust has levels. Mm. There is the intellectual level where we acknowledge a need and confirm a need to trust God. There is the emotional level where we feel secure in God's love and care during difficult times. There's the practical level where we act in faith following his guidance for our lives. There's the obedient level where we commit ourselves to follow the word of God. But then there is the enduring level where we maintain faith in God despite facing challenges and uncertainties in our lives. And it's in all these levels of trust that we apply them to the particular situation of our lives. There are times that we need confirmation. There are times that we need security. There are times that we need guidance, times where we need direction, and times where we need to hold on to our faith. And I would lay at your feet that we are in a time that we need the enduring level of trust as we face times of challenges and uncertainty. Let me talk about the elephant in the room. As a country, as a nation, we are in a time of uncertainty. Any time you, you, you have to live under a new governmental administration, there comes with it a certain amount of uncertainty. Uncertainty about how are our global neighbors going to react. Uncertainty about the effect on the nation as a whole. Uncertainty about the effect on our lives as individuals. Now with any amount of uncertainty in the human dynamic, there comes anxiety, comes fear, and there comes uneasiness. Because when the mind starts to consider that what could happen, the mental and emotional part of the human makeup usually responds with thoughts founded in fear. And even right now on the heels of our recent election, the country has already started down the road of a fear-based response. And even those that voted for the incoming administration are starting a journey down that road of fear-based responses. I was watching some, an internet program and they talked about the fact that they're, um, they looked at some internet statistics the day after the election. And 
they were looking at what people were searching for in the search engines, what they were searching for, and they found out that millions were searching for how can I change my vote. And the reason they wanted to change it is because some of them got some new information that they didn't have before they voted. Now, I need those of you whose mother told you, a father told you that hindsight is 2020. But I want to remind us today that those who are in covenant relationship with God, that fear is not of God. Second Timothy 1 and 7, the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and love and of a sound mind. Now the word of God is plain that while we experience fear on some level, it did not come from God. I believe that fear is part of our natural DNA. And it is part of our natural DNA as a part of the sin nature that dwells with us. And I know there are a lot of people who claim not to be scared of anything. But I respectfully disagree. You just ain't ran into that thing yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know, I know you big. I know you bad. I know, I know you got skills. I, I, I know, but... You just ain't ran into that thing. Ooh, y'all are quiet in the sanctuary. You just ain't ran into that thing. You see, you see, the disciples thought we got Jesus with us and we ain't scared of nothing until they got on with that boat. And when those waves and those winds start hitting the boat, they ran to Jesus and they care as thou not that we perish. Another reason why I say that all of us experience a level of fear in our lives, and I base that belief on what God gives. Whenever God gives us something, it opposes what sin has put on us. Think about it. Sin put the stain of transgression on our lives. But God gave us the blood of Jesus to oppose it. Sin put in us a place of separation from God, but God gave us salvation to oppose it. Sin put fear on us, but God gave us faith to oppose it. And faith in God leads to trust in God. And trust in God leads to a sound mind. A mind that is not full of anxiety. A mind that is anchored in peace. A mind that is connected to a God that no matter what it looks like, he's willing and able to sustain you. Oh, God. I, I need to ask somebody. Uh, uh, help me ask your neighbor. Uh, a neighbor. Uh, 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 have you ever had God come through in a pinch for you? I just, need to, I just need to survey the room. Have you ever had God come through when the doctor said ain't nothing else I can do? Have you ever had God come through when you didn't have two nickels to rub together? Have you ever had God come through in a pinch? See, some people can't, can't rejoice over that because you ain't been pinched yet. But I'm going to tell you like my mama told me, keep on living, baby. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. When David looked back over his life, David said, I was young, but now I'm old. 
I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed bear bread. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. That means that not only did God take care of me, God took care of my children. He took care of my grandchildren. He took care of my great, 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 great. How many of you know God is a generational blesser? Oh, I got, God will bless you and bless every generation that comes after you. David said this because he had history with God. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's your history with God? David said, when I faced a lion and a bear and a giant, God gave me power to win. David said, I faced the guilt and shame of my own sin, but God gave me forgiveness and restoration. When I faced my enemies, God gave me grace and victory in the presence of my enemies. David's history with God solidified his trust in God. Because when David looked back over his life, he saw the consistency of God in his life. From tending his father's sheep to leading his heavenly father's nation, God was consistent in his life. Through all of the changes and through all of the shifts and through all all of the uncertainties, uh, through all of the famines and through all of the plagues and through all of the externals, uh, God was consistent. Uh, and for those of you who have a history, God, I, with God, I came by to tell you to elevate your trust uh, in God uh, in this season. Uh, because what he has done, uh, he's still able to do. Uh, oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, if he did it before, uh, he can do do it again. Thank you, Ty Trippin. If he did it before, God can I need to say it again. If God did it before, he's still able to do it again. I know it looks crazy, but he can still do it. I know it may appear foolish to the corner mind, but he can still do it. I may know, I know it may not be widely accepted, but it's true. And God will separate you from the prevailing mindset of fear in this world. Oh God, lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you okay with being separated? Uh, 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 Peter looked at it and he said we are a peculiar people oh God we, we, we are a royal priesthood can I tell you this <laughs> can I tell you this uh, 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 I learned this from Bishop Noah Jones he said if it's common it ain't valuable Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. If it's common, it ain't that valuable. Do you see just anybody driving a Bentley? Do you just see just uh, do you see just anybody living uh, uh, in mansions? Do you just see just anybody doing this? Well, uh, can I tell you today that you are part of the elite class in the kingdom of God because you are the elect of God. I need to speak into your self-esteem. You are the elite of God, and God will take care of His anointed. God is not going to let you suffer. God is not going to let you fall. God is not going to let God said, I will be there for you. Every you in the place, give God a praise. The text is tailored to tell us that trust in God will separate you from prevailing mindsets. In the backdrop of the text, David writes this psalm in reflection of his history with God and the prayer he prayed in a particular time in his life. 
in that time, the nation was about to go into war against the Ammonites and the Assyrians. Now, the Ammonites were the descendants of the incestuous sin of Lot and his daughters. Ah, for those of you who are not familiar, Lot's daughters laid down with her dad. Out of being, what do the young people say, thirsty? <laughs> they laid down with their dads and each one of them was impregnated by their father. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, what a mess. And one of them had a son named ben Ami which was the forefather of the Ammonites. As a nation, the Ammonites were the enemies of Israel. They served idol gods like Molech. Molech was, a, was an idol god that, that, that the people felt like they had to sacrifice their children to satisfy this god. The Ammonites had been defeated once by the children of Israel, but had now joined allegiance with the Assyrians, who were a ruthless people who at one time took the northern part of Israel and carried the captives into exile. The Lord referred to the Assyrians as the rod of my anger. Meaning God used them to chastise Israel for their transgressions. Now together these nations created a great army of military might. Incorporating the uses of great numbers of warriors on horsebacks and, 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 and a great number of chariots. And David here in the text is about to face this enemy. But he does something that's a little bit peculiar. He prays to God. Can I put a pin right here? Anytime you face a great amount of opposition from the enemy, your only real recourse has got to be prayer. Oh, God, because you and I can't fight and defeat the great assembly of opposition by ourselves. And in those times, uh, we need to use our helpline. Oh, my God. Uh, lean over your neighbor and say, use your helpline. And your helpline is prayer, which connects us uh, to God. Oh, God, I need to connect with God right about now. In the times of uncertainty, in the times of personal anxiety, in the times of turmoil and fear, I need to connect with God because God is the only one who can keep me and deliver me at the same time. I wish I had somebody in here. Uh, come here, Daniel, and bring your friends with you. Daniel would tell you that we all were made captive by Nebuchadnezzar's plan. And we all went to the palace together but we was in a place to be defeated but we were not defeated because we stood ten toes down on the word of our God they fed us but it didn't change us they did this and they did that to try to sway our minds and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego would tell you they put us in the fire but even in the fire we stood on God I need about 15 of y'all to help me preach this message and tell your neighbor whatever situation you find yourself in just stand on the word of God because the word of God got power to hold you and deliver you at the same time oh I wish I had somebody in here that would just lean over to your neighbor and say neighbor matter of fact all my life he been delivering me and maintaining me all my life. Here's 
Here's another peculiar thing. He didn't wait, David, until he got in the battle before he connected with God. He connected before he got into battle <laughs> because his faith led him to God. Have you ever prayed about something that you saw coming your way and God fixed it, fixed you in the moment and when it got to you, you were ready to handle it? Uh, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Prayer changes you uh, before it changes things. Uh, oh, God, I wish I had somebody. Because if God changes the thing before he changes you, he will have to change it again because it will come back around. Uh, but when God changes you, uh, uh, you can tell past devils, uh, I defeated you before uh, and I'll defeat you again. Uh, you, you can tell new devils, uh, uh, the weapon they formed, uh, but it will not not this was not unfamiliar enemy for the nation of Israel <laughs> they had history with the Ammonites they had history with the Assyrians and sometimes the devil would try to bring old enemies back in your life <laughs> But just like you trusted God before and got the victory, you got to trust him now. David prays and he asked God. And he, now, here, here's another peculiar thing. He said, God, give me your ear, your protection, and your strength. Are y'all following me in the word? He said, give me your ear, your protection, and your strength. Give me your ear. Hear me in the time. God, I'm not your trouble but mine. Protect me in not your trouble but my trouble. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Strengthen me not in my weakness, not in your weakness, but my weakness. Huh? Oh, God. It's in these three requests that David places his trust in God. I don't know about you, but have you ever made these three requests to God because you were cognizant of the promises of God on your life? Uh, can I just declare to everybody in here and everybody that's watching us on Facebook, can I declare to you God ain't changed his mind about you. Everything that he spoke, everything that he proclaimed, everything that he declared over your life, God has not changed his mind oh my God there is no earthly administration that can make God go back on his word God is God and beside him there is no other lean over to your name and say neighbor I gotta put my trust in God because God knows the way I should take God knows but when I'm tried he shall bring me forth as pure gold I need some gold in here to stand on your feet and glorify God he was cognizant of the promises of God on his life. Uh, God, God had promised uh, to hear us. Uh, uh, in Proverbs 15, 29, he says, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Oh God. Isaiah 65, 24, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. God promised to protect us. In 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, God says, the Lord is faithful and he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. 
Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment that shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith God. God promised to strengthen us. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I need to tell the people of God that God is not slack concerning his promises. If he said him, he will bring it to pass. You can bank on it. You can believe it. You can trust it because God said it. Oh God, I feel a preach coming on. After requesting from God, David speaks to the heart of God uh, about the sacrifices uh, that were made to him uh, and the heart of God uh, to fulfill the promises uh, that God had declared mm, over their lives uh, and I need to tell somebody the blessings of God uh, over your life uh, is not because of who you know uh, is not because of your intellect uh, is not because of your charisma uh, it's because he loves you uh, oh God touch your name Neighbor. Say, neighbor, you're blessed out of love. I love a love that's not swayed by circumstances or situation. A love that's not altered by faults and failures. A love that is not intimidated by fear and worry, but a love that is worthy of his trust. David was so confident in the love of God that he had for them that even before before they went to battle, he was praising God for the victory. Uh, go to verse 5. He said, I will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy position. Ask your neighbor who does that? Who rejoices before the victory? Who sets up banners before the battle ever starts? Who shouts before the battle is over? And answer your neighbor and say I do because I am a child of the king. Um, people that don't know God are drowning in their fear. People People that don't know God are scrambling for answers. People that don't know God are losing their minds because they are not like us. We are the people of the living God. We are the people that are shouting before the victory is won. We are the people that will set up banners before the battle is over. We are the people that will shout hallelujah even before we put on our armor and begin to fight. David says, he said, none. I know that the Lord saving his anointed he will hear them from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand and what David is saying about God concerning his people that God saves or God rescues his anointed it is him that the anointing the destroys the yoke. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you yoke with in this season, God got an anointed promise that the anointing will destroy the yoke. I need somebody in the place to high five your neighbor. Say, this yoke of fear gone. This yoke of anxiety 
gone because it all got to come under the power of the anointing. Touch another neighbor and say, neighbor, the anointing is strong enough to deliver Israel. The anointing is strong enough to lock the doors of the lion when he was in the lion there. The anointing is strong enough to keep me living, to keep me walking, to keep me prospering in a land that's against me. I wish I had about 50 of y'all that would say, Lord, thank you for your anointing. God chose you for such a time as this. He knew it was coming, but now he wants you not to come, but be what he called you to be. Ooh. And what David now, he said, I don't mean that fear won't come. It don't mean that you won't be affected by the fear. But when it comes and you turn to God, God will rescue you from it. David said he will hear He will hear. He will hear. I know CNN is talking, but God will hear. I know that Fox News is talking, but he will hear. No, the party is talking, but he will hear. High five a neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need CNN to hear me. I don't need Fox News to hear me. I don't even need Trump to hear me. I just need God to hear me because to God I serve. I God I serve. The God I serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all he is creature here's what I like he said he will hear from his holy heaven y'all missed it his holy heaven his holy heaven look at the position of God he's seated on his throne in his holy heaven he's high above the difficulties why because he has not hey, relinquished his position while his people are going through changes got your neighbor and say God is still on the throne he has not stepped down he would he didn't serve a four-year term he's still on the throne and as long as God is on the throne it don't matter who's on Capitol Hill as long as God is on the throne it don't matter who's in the White House as long as God is on the throne cause I don't serve my president I don't serve my senator I don't serve my representative but I serve a whole holy almighty God so David David concludes Rev. Parks he says I know confidence in God I know that God is going to come through 
for his people. But I also know that trust in God separates me from everybody else. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear me. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, the trust on this level separates me from my co-workers. Trust on this level separates me from my family members. Trust on this level it separates me from those that don't know God. Now high five your neighbor and say, they are not like us because we we will praise God in the midst of a famine we will lift God the name of the Lord where our body is racking with pain we will lift up holy hands when everybody got their head hung down they are not like us I need some rebels I need some revolutionary saints to find your neighbor and say neighbor I need about five people come up here I need about five glory be to God I need about five I need about five y'all get in y'all group y'all get in y'all's group Ooh. touch your neighbor and say ain't he alright ain't he alright glory be to God now that's them them that you work with them in your family them in your social circle them on the internet them on the TV now while they are them I'm going to be me because I have been through too much not to believe that God gonna bring me through I've been up and I've been down I almost left with the ground but God by his power God by his strength he separated us Oh God, I wish y'all could hear it. He separated us. Now they are going to be them. But I need the people of God to be who God made you. And say, I, I'm going to rejoice in the trouble. I'm going to put up banners in the trouble. I'm going to mark my ground because it ain't they God is my God that's able he's able how many of y'all believe that he's able he will he can he shall I five your neighbor and say neighbor everything I can't be like my co-worker she about to lose her mind. I can't be like everybody else. Family, friends, internet, TV. That's the masses. But I heard, I heard, I heard God say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But if I walk differently than what she thinks, if I walk differently than what she thinks, if I walk differently than what she thinks, if I walk differently from what they say, if I walk differently from what they say, when they see 
to God and me, they'll come behind me because they'll realize the God we serve. If he did it for me, he'll do it for my family. If he did it for me, he'll do it for my loved ones. If he do it for me, he will. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am not like them and they are not like us. Give him a praise. They're not like us. They're not like us. They're not like us. They're not like us. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. I need to help in here. They not like us. 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 So when you go to work tomorrow. And your co-worker said, girl, ain't you worried? Just tell them, I'm different. Don't get mad at them. Don't put your mouth on them. But just know in your mind, they not like us. <laughs> Somebody give God glory. Say yes. Say yes, oh yes, say yes to God. Listen, some of y'all might be saying, well, pastor, I can't separate from my job. I can't separate. I need the job. I can't separate from my family. I can't separate from my friends. I, they've been in my life for a long time. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't separate from the technology because, because that's, that's the wave of communication nowadays. I didn't say separate, but when you trust in God, you don't become like them. Because some of you are the, it's the only saved person in your family. Some of you, God has brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Some of you, you're the only saved friend some of your friends got. And I'm not saying that you separate yourself. I'm just letting you know trust will separate you. Some trust in chariots. That's a decision they made. Some trust in horses. That's a decision they made. But I heard you in Sunday school said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, for some of y'all over 40, I know y'all probably, where he get that title from? But where my young people at? Y'all understand what that means, right? Come on, don't, don't look at me like that. I know you listen to, the, to Kendrick Lamar. Come on. I know you saw him throw them things up. I know y'all saw him. Somebody say, that's Snoop. Now Kendrick does it too. But I need you to get the message. God has already made you a peculiar people. Our ministers are coming. Why? Because you are of value to the plan 
and purpose of God for the kingdom. When our ministers is coming, I want to just share something with you. Those of you who have been around, around a bundle of fellowship for a minute. About, I think it was about two years ago. And I'm about to do this again. Every year I go to God and I say, Lord, what is the theme? What's the focus for the coming year for the church? And about two or three years ago, God told me, tell my people that I am reestablishing my name on the earth. Now, God didn't tell me how he was going to do it. But I came before you and I told you, God said that he is reestablishing his name. COVID did damage to his name. Because whenever people are alone and they get in their own head, they get damage about God occurs. And I know that you saw all of the stuff that was out there about we don't need the church and the church ain't this and the church ain't that and I don't go to church because them people ain't right. You go to the st strip club. Oh, y'all might as well say, man, she don't love you. Oh, I know it's, it's, it's tight, but it's right. You go drop it like it's hot and can't pick it up the next day. And you ain't worried about, you ain't worried about the morals of the club owner. I hope, I hope them strippers are saved. But it's the enemy's plot and scheme to try to demean the name of our God. Sister Bridget, I'm already in trouble. I might as well go there. Don't you find it peculiar that out of all of the years that Diddy has done what he's done, now, When Cat Williams has become our prophet. Oh, I know y'all don't want to say man. I got it. We got to be careful about who we allow to pour into us. Because the devil is as slick as the back of your hand. That's why Paul said, know the wiles, the methodology, the schemes of the enemy. So that you'll be able to stand in the evil day. And I'm not condoning what, do, what, what Diddy did. I don't even know what he did. I didn't go to no party. But here's the thing. The people of God, listen to me. God is saying with all of the noise, listen to me. How long have you had that Bible? How long have you been coming to church? How long have God been speaking to you? Tell me one time that he lied to you. This is not a season for us to allow the fear of the enemy to embrace our minds and our spirit. This is the time to elevate our trust in our God. Somebody may be here today and you say, well, you know what, Pastor Ross, I... I I hear what you say, but I don't know that Jesus. I don't know him in relationship with him. 
Or you may be online today and you say, well, I don't, I don't know him. I don't know him. But there's something that kept you staying, that kept you tuned when you wanted to cut it off and go to something else. There was something that kept you tuned in. And can I tell you, that was the Holy Spirit. Because no man can come to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. And if the Spirit of God is drawing you, if you're live with us, we want you to come. Our ministers are here to help lead you to him. If you're here, won't you come? Or maybe, or maybe you say, well, Pastor, I couldn't make it to the service today, but I do want him. Him being Jesus. I want him in my life. I'm tired of this, this life. I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. I've, I've done my thing. I've, I've, I've done it, but I'm tired of it. It's, it's, it has not gotten me anywhere. Because what my soul needs, my sin can't provide. If I'm talking to you, I want you to come. But if you're online with us, I want you to say this simple prayer with me. And I want you to mean it from your heart. Father, I come to you now. I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that he came and died on the cross, shed his blood for the remissions of my sin. I ask him now, Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins and all of my transgressions. I open the door to my heart. Come in. Save me, deliver me, and lead me in the way that you would have me to go. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it in your heart and you're committed in your heart, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Now, here's something that's going to be very important for you to do. Next steps. You got to find a church. Yes, a church that is preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. And there are examples of godliness for you to follow. Now, it doesn't matter where you are in the continental U.S., wherever you are watching this from, I want to make a recommendation to you. There's a church nestled in the heart of Texas, namely Waco. And nestled right there in Waco, in the Hewitt Robinson area, is a church called the Abundant Love Fellowship Church. I can recommend this church because I've been at this church going on 10 years. I know the pastor. I know the pastor's wife. I know the first family. I know the love that dwells in that church. I know the people of that church. They have a heart for God. And my recommendation is based on my experience. If you are in that area... Or maybe you live somewhere else. It doesn't matter. If you live outside of the sanctuary today, I want you to write. Go ahead, type your name and a contact number in that comment box. And listen, listen, y'all, promise you, I know the pastor real good. And you will get a call next week from him to make that official thing. But if you're here today, all you got to do is come forward. And this church will receive you as you come. You ain't got to, 
You ain't got to dress like we dress. You ain't got to look like we look. God said, whosoever will, <laughs> let him come. If you're here today, won't you come? This is the place, if this is the place that God wants to bless you, grow you, mature you, develop you. Do you know that you got a purpose? And the purpose is the purpose of God on your life. But just knowing you got a purpose, you need that purpose needs to be cultivated. It needs to be developed. And this is a great place to have that done. If you're here, won't you come? Won't you come? Now this last call is for those of you who need prayer. And you say, Pastor, I'm not like them. But we need prayer. Glory be to God. See, when we run into things, we still need him. And if you're here and you got some theme that you're facing in your life, and you say, Pastor, I just need somebody to join in covenant agreement with me. I believe God can fix that thing. I believe God can do with that thing that things I can't do with it. If you trust him like that, but you got a need like that, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to look at us as prayer partners right now. Glory be to God. I want you to come. If you need prayer for anything at all, because my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Lean over to your neighbor and say, he's loaded. He's loaded. He's loaded. He got it. He got it. Sickness, he got that healing. Bondage, he got that deliverance. He is loaded. The Bible declares that he... He loads us with benefits. So if he loads us with benefits, he got to be loaded. You do not have a need that God can't fix for you. If you're here, won't you come? Won't you come? I trust in God, my Savior, the one My Savior, the one who will never fail, he will fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who never fail, he will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never Trust 
Hallelujah. Standing all over the building. There's ministry going on all over the church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Um, Ariel, you don't mind. God just laid you on my heart, honey. Do you mind if I pray for you? You don't have to get a baby up. You don't have to get a baby up. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you glory. I give you honor, God. I thank you for this young lady, Father. And God, I pray that you would go deep inside of her soul, her spirit, Father, her heart. Mend it, God. Put it back together, God. Lord, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, restore and renew, Father God. Oh, God, you love her with an unconditional love. Let her feel that, God. Let her know that, Father God. And Father God, by your miraculous work, through your spirit, Father God, minister to her even in this moment. It's in Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Father, we put a banner up in her life right now. She belongs to you, God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Grab your neighbor's hands on both sides of you. Hallelujah. Now unto him. Hey. Hey, God. Who is able to keep us from falling. And who present us faultless before his throne. With exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be dominion. Power and glory. Henceforth now and forever. And all of the people of God said. Amen. And a, and a man. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to leave you now. But I want to leave you with this. They not like us. God bless you.